Jaguars. Hey guys, Doug, Coat of Arms. I'm here with Mike Brake from Brake Tactical Training Solutions. You got it. Hi, good afternoon. We got a lot of rifles on the table. What's happening? Yeah, I have the pleasure of working with Vortex Canada, so we're here uh, answering questions and doing some demo, uh, demonstrations for the optics. And what I wanted to do here was have a rifle that I could demonstrate some uh, putting the optics onto the rifle. Well, it happened to be a customer who just bought a nice Vortex optics there and bring it up to the table, we'll do it for you. So what we want to talk about with the customer is starting up with bases. Uh, the bases have to be uh, secured to the receiver with a little bit of blue, blue Loctite getting the correct uh, bases from a reverse system versus a uh, military standard base like that. I'm going to help him with his rings, get the rings on there, and I'll help him to make sure that the rifle is level, the scope is level, and then tighten everything down. And if we can get to it in the room, we'll maybe get a little bit of a bore sight going on here. So when he gets to the range, he's not going to be all over the map. It's got to be level. I think that's a very, very critical thing, especially if any shooter wants to stretch the legs out of the firearm platform, say, beyond 300 meters. Having it level is very critical. That's the main thing I want to focus on with him today. My name of the game is precision. And it's like anything else in life, you're only going to get what you pay for. So if you uh, go cheap, then expect cheap results. They call it precision shooting, we need things to be precise and in the optics industry and in the firearm industry, you want precision, it's going to cost you. He was curious about doing some precision shooting, uh, he's limited to about 300 meters. Uh, so the first thing I need to know from the shooter was, well, what are you, what are you willing to spend? Uh, within the Vortex industry, uh, you've got the high-end uh, razor line, which in my opinion, that's the precision line. You're not going to get any better than the razor line. Middle of the road is the Viper series. Uh, and then just below the Viper series is what the customer has settled down with is the Strike Eagle. Uh, the customer is not going to be going out winning gold medals. He just wants to be as precise as he can within a budget and within the range limitations of 300 meters. So we've made a good choice. Uh, when you're putting this expensive optic on your rifle, you've got basically four points of contact. Uh, that's what we just did for this customer is making sure that those mounts are going to be properly secured there so they don't move. And uh, you've got steel rings on your aluminum uh, uh, optic. Aluminum rings, although they're light, they are aluminum and not as strong. We want to make sure we have as much contact around the optic as possible. You can get some rings that are maybe a third of that in width. So there you're limiting the amount of contact on the optic. He's made a good choice here and he went with a nice wide ring, steel rings. It's going to have a lot of bearing surface around the scope too and I'll let them know about when you tighten down these screws, it's very, very important. Uh, most manufacturers don't provide the customer with how many inch pounds to put on to the mounts, onto the rings, and customer might make the mistake of uh, torquing down uh, on the rings, and you go, oh, a little tighter, oh, a little tighter, oh, a little tighter, and just because I don't want it to come off. So make them Hercules tight. Smart, but not really, because what you're doing is you're now crushing the aluminum tube of the optic. Without getting too technical, there's an inner tube within your optic and the outer tube that we can actually see. If you put unnecessary torque on that outer tube, it's going to put pressure on the inner tube and it's going to affect how much adjustability is going to be there. So you might try to make an adjustment and it comes to a dead stop or it's giving you an incorrect adjustment. And that is usually boiled down to customer error on installation. They put too much torque on those rings. I did a little bit more research. It is very good uh, value for the money that you're spending. I know a little bit about uh, Mike here doing the install, so I'm not worried that that's going to go wrong. It's nice that uh, uh, basically Vortex themselves are installing it on the, uh, on the rifle. So. The torque uh, driver here allows us to get 40 inch pounds on the base uh, rings or bolts, whatever you happen to be using. The bottom rings, similarly, uh, they're either going to be bolt heads like this or there'll be some kind of a, a nut, 40 inch pounds. That's what goes on to your lower rings and onto the mounts of the rifle itself. I'm going to take the top rings off and see how the optic looks inside once it's mounted. You don't need Hercules to put on the, these rings and that kind of makes us a little bit nervous because we think that's what's holding on to our optic, but it's that bearing surface. Remember we talked about little skinny rings versus the wider rings, so you get, get more bearing surface on there and it's not uh, a lot of strength involved. 18 inch pounds on the top rings. 
take the time to take any lubricant off. You can even, if you're concerned about it, you can put uh, you know, some kind of a degreaser on the threads of the bolts so that they have absolutely no grease on them whatsoever. Uh, some shooters would be concerned, well, I don't want them to rust. Well, you're right, you don't want them to rust, so we do have to have an aftercare program if you're out in the rain but you don't want any lubricant on any of these components whatsoever. So this shooter has uh, very limited options with these weaver bases on where the bottom rings are going to go. Uh, his question earlier was, how high should I get these rings? That's a really good question. Uh, there is a mathematical formula that uh, you could uh, uh, calculate versus um, uh, the height from the cheek piece to the center line of the bore and the center line of your tube access versus you, you'll get an answer to how much height do I need for the rings. And the purpose of that is so that your objective bell here does not hit the barrel. Trying to get everything in line from his eyeball through the optic and onto his given target. Another uh, benefit, he doesn't have one for his particular rifle. Uh, he mentioned that he's going to be shooting maybe 300 meters at the most. So this might not be something he's ideally going to be wanting to purchase. I would recommend it for somebody that's shooting beyond 300. It's, it's a scope level. It's something that gets attached to um, a precision long range rifle. You can see the other rifles in the room that have these bubble levels. The idea is that when you're, when you're firing down range, you don't want any cant to the rifle. Anytime you cant it, well, if, I cant, if I'm canting it left, that shot's going to go left and drop down left. And I'm exaggerating the, mo the movement here, but even just a, a millimeter at my end, at 600 meters or 1,200 meters, that one millimeter of movement is going to uh, correlate to that distance dramatically so dramatically so before you crank everything down you got to get into whatever shooting position is going to be your shooting position uh, crank it to the highest power because the highest power does this to our window and makes it narrower the lower power makes it wider so crank it down to the lowest setting get into your shooting position and then have a friend or on your, if you're on your own, it just makes it a little bit more difficult, and you just kind of slide it back and forth a little bit until you're at that largest window, and call that, that's my eye relief. My eye relief is now set. Now you can go ahead and mount the rings yeah. down. And you're going to be shooting off a bench on the ground? Primarily off a bench. Off a bench. So I think what I'll do is I'll get things turned around a little bit here. We can take advantage of this tabletop. Uh, and act it kind of like a bench and you can just take up a regular shooting type position and we'll do that. We'll make sure that the eye relief is set for you. The shooter is at his range, he's comfortable off a bench, so his predominant shooting is going to be from a bench. With this bench type position, I can now work with him and together we'll get that eye relief set. So feel free to take this bag and just uh, turn it like so. I, I can recognize that you want a little bit more height there. Yeah. And you can take your left hand and just squeeze on that bag a little bit and just get it as high as you want. Yeah, there you go. It's a very versatile bag. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dial this right down to its lowest magnification. And that's going to give you a nice big window at some point in time, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go a little closer to you and you tell me when to stop you know, at its sweet spot. It's getting smaller or bigger? Bigger. Bigger? Good. Yeah, bigger. just right in there. Bigger. So ideally, uh, we'll ask the shooter, what's the highest magnification you think you'll shoot from? And some of these optics can go to a ridiculous number, 30, 40, 50. Mm -hmm. Bench rest shooters have that kind of magnification. Uh, some shooters will experience at the high magnification mirage. Uh, so it, unless you learn how to shoot with Mirage, do you really need that much magnification? I think you've gone with a, a 3 to 24, is that what yeah. this is? 3 to 24? I don't know if you're ever going to be using 24. Probably not. Maybe 24 to see your bullet holes, perhaps. Right. But 24 is quite high power. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to say let's let's say 20. Yeah. Okay. Let's say 20. Let's say 20 is going to be your your maximum setting. You could always go more if you want when you're trying to check bullet holes mm -hmm. or something like that. For just for precision shooting, let's call it 20 power. So I'm going to do the same thing again. But what I'd like you to do is come off the rifle and just pretend you're looking down range, mm -hmm. and then naturally put your head on the rifle, just naturally. That's your natural position. Mm -hmm. I don't want the shooter to start moving their head around trying to find the comfortable position. I want the rifle to fit the shooter, not the shooter to try to fit themselves to the rifle. So I'm gonna start sliding it towards you, and you tell me, is the window getting better or worse? Mm, better. Good. 
Tell me when it's at its maximum uh, spread across. Nice big window. Uh, out slightly. <laughs> right about there. Right about there. Excellent. So what we've accomplished is setting the eye relief for the shooter. Get their head naturally onto the cheek piece. Uh, and I'm looking right now for a nice straight line from the uh, inner tube right to his eye. So we try not to move the rifle now because we have uh, the eye relief set. So we just kind of keep things still a little bit. And this is where a friend comes in handy. If you're doing this at home, you can see how careful you have to be with resting the rifle because now you got to get to your tools and, and start uh, putting down, putting the bolts down. Once we have that eye relief set, the top rings get put in place, but they do not get tightened down. Uh, and just as the shooter had mentioned, we got to level it off. Absolutely, got to make sure that the rifle's level, the reticle's level. As you can see where the rings and bases are in relation to the turret towers, we've got a nice equal distance. So I'm going to slowly start to turn these down, and I'm trying to keep the top ring even on both sides. Now again, I'm not going to crank it down because there's still more work we have to do. But I'd like to put just enough friction on there that it's not going to move while we have a few more things to, to take care of. I'm starting to feel it pinch my skin on my finger and, and thumb so I can feel it starting to take up a little pressure around the optic. But we, first we've got to uh, level the rifle. This particular bipod platform doesn't have a pivoting ability. It's not a big deal, but we can we can fix that. So I'm going to try to get a bit more height onto your, your left leg here. It's pretty close. Pretty close. Well, right now our attempt is with the first level is to make the rifle as level to Mother Earth as possible. That's all we've done. Rifle's level. Great. Now how's the optic? So I attach that to the optic and I can see, well, no, my, my optic is twisted within the ring. So if I put too much pressure on the ring, it means I won't be able to turn it. So what I'll let you do is what you just saw me do with the optic and just until you're happy. What do you think? Okay, that's good. A little better. All right. Apply some pressure on the ring without moving the optic. Just get it started because as we move around, we don't want to move that. And I'm going to pay attention to the space that's developed there and the space that's developed on the other side, the opposite side, doing our best to, as we tighten that that space maintains its consistency from the left side, right side. Trying to feel them being even in little quarter, quarter turns. The mount set, the bottom ring's in place, scope is in place. Uh, uh, get the eye relief set to the shooter, level off the rifle, level off the optic with the rifle. Top ring's in place, the 18 inch pounds. We now can adjust the reticle inside the optic so it's crisp and clear to the shooter's eye. So this is great. So what I start with is I take the, the focus piece, sorry, and I just push, I just rotate that focus piece so it's all the way into the optic. And what we have here is ideal conditions. There's something white for the shooter to look at. And it doesn't matter how far it is, because we're not, we're not being target focused right now. All I want you to be focused on is that reticle. So just like before, take up a comfortable shooting position, and you can come off the rifle. And when you're ready, come on the rifle and look at that reticle. Now it may be in focus, it may not, but your eye is going to try its best to focus it for you. Don't, we don't want that. We want that reticle to be focused to your eye. The longer we look at that reticle, our eye will focus it. But I don't want my eye to have that much work to do. So you can play with the reticle, uh, the focus yourself. Once you get onto the rifle, you give it, say, a half a turn. And go, is it getting better? Oh, it's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better. Oh, wow, that's really crisp. And then come off. Don't stay on it too long. Go back on. Keep turning. Oh, it's getting worse. Okay, so you pass that sweet spot. And you just keep coming back and forth, head on, head on, head off, head on, until you get that nice, crisp, clear reticle every single time. And eventually you'll start to see it get fuzzy, and you, re you realize, okay, I've gone too far now. But all this work we're doing right now is trying to fit the rifle to the shooter. I don't want my shooter to have to do anything out of the ordinary. Just get on the gun and be comfortable.
And now you just apply your fundamentals of marksmanship and you're going to shoot bullseye 10 X rings every single time. <laughs> We're going to hold you to that. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So everything is nice and level. The only thing we haven't done yet, um, besides firing a shot, is well, are we as close to being zero with this as possible? Is it sighted in? Mm -hmm. We don't have much to work with here, other than uh, one of the gentlemen put a target across the room. And I'll show you how we do what's called a hasty bore sight. Uh, it's only 10, 10 meters away, but at least it's a start. So all we do for a hasty bore sight is get ourselves behind the rifles, just like you were doing, but I look down the bore at something. Mm. Ideally, 100 meters down there, or 100 yards, ideally. We've only got 10 yards to work with, but the concept is the same. And once I look down the bore, and I've centered my bore on whatever that object is, just raise my head a little bit, and see where the reticle is in relation to what I'm looking at. And we make the adjustments right here. And then it's got a nice red dot, and I can see the red dot down the center of the bore. So I know my rifle is on, and when I slowly lift my head up, I look at my, my reticle and see where the reticle is in relation to that red dot. It's, it's helpful to have a, a second pair of hands in place that can, that can help manage this. And it's helpful to be on a lower magnification setting. Yeah, actually left and right looks good. Yeah. And remember, this, this is called a hasty bore sight. I'm doing this just to get on paper if you have a, a sheet of three feet by three feet paper you'll be able to get on your three feet by three feet paper and then you can uh, make any adjustments right from, right from the turret, right from the turret itself. You can do this from 100 meters, get yourself on the target board with a nice clean sheet and uh, then just do your, your, your calculations from here and slip scales. Yeah. I'm going to get a little bit more magnification so I can see the reticle. So we're going to work on this together. I'm going to be back here at the bore, going up and down with my head, and then I'll ask you to turn the turret. So you can see the direction, yeah. this way is up, this way is down, yeah. What's interesting is I might ask you to come up, you actually go down. That'll move my reticle up. It can get a little confusing, yes. but really what we're doing here, although it says up and I dial up, what it's doing inside is taking my reticle and moving it down. It's going in the opposite direction. So if I say up, you go down. And if I say down, up. He's good at this. I need you to come down. How far, many? You just keep going. That's the razor. Keep going. Keep going. And stop. That takes a CR 123A battery. Or it'll take the Come right, so turn your dial left. Yeah. So that'll be, yep, correct. What you want to establish is a true zero. 100, mar 100 meters, 100 yards, aim center, hit center. Uh, with the right loads, now this is more of a, this isn't a precision barrel. You can see how thin the sucker is. Perhaps one shot, wait a few minutes. One shot. Wait a few minutes, because you start firing repetitions, this barrel's going to heat up, and it's going to give some erratic behavior. Um, so you follow that concept, and you still want to get a group of three shots, five shots, dead center. What you're going to learn next is go to your 200 meter range. Fire your shots. It's obviously going to be low. That's when you go to the elevation turret to learn how much up do I need to come at 200. Repeat at 300, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what you're developing now is called dope. Yeah. Uh, your, 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 your performance line, your yeah. information, that on previous engagement. Well, i got to say I'm very appreciative. It, it is a very long process. I mean, we've been at it almost an hour. Yeah. Um, it takes a while, and like it's been said many times, better to get it right at the start. And we worked on it together. Uh, and anytime you need some help, let me know. I'm just an email away. Well, thanks, Keith. Thank uh, you very thank much, Thank you for Mike. your patience. I do appreciate it. And so you don't miss out. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube.com. This is Code of Arms.